Hi, I'm Kelly Holmes, the National School Sport Champion. The transition from primary to secondary school can be a tricky time for children, and if things don't go smoothly, their physical education can suffer just as much as any other part of their learning. But with planning and imagination, the move can be a positive experience, as you will see. The move up to big school can present many challenges for 11-year-olds, including unfamiliar buildings, specialist subject teachers, new peers, and long and tiring school days. And there are issues for secondary teachers too. A lack of information about new year seven pupils can lead to wasted weeks of trying to discover each pupil's attainment levels and learning needs. But there are ways to make the transition smoother and the Manor School, a specialist sports college in Mansfield, uses a range of strategies to do exactly that. So what we're going to do today is we're going to continue to work on this quality side of things and continue to work on trying to make everything smooth. Catherine Lacey, a gymnastics specialist, has been piloting a seven-week project in primary schools across the local school sport partnership. Just recently, Catherine has also started teaching Year 7s like these at the Manor. In some cases, it means she's working again with pupils she first taught in primary school. In the primaries, Catherine's teaching uses language and techniques that are standardised to maximise continuity between primary and secondary school. I start off by observing the teachers in week one so I can actually get some baseline data um, to see um, where the pupils are at, where the teachers are at in terms of their confidence and their subject knowledge. Um, I've also had support with an um, HMI inspector who's also come in helping me get that baseline data. The following week I then deliver the lesson um, as a week one lesson where I'd feel the children need to be um, for that year group. And then in week seven, uh, which is the end of the time in the school, it's back to the teacher delivering the whole lesson. Um, we video and we have the HMI inspector back in again to see what, what impact the support's had on the project. You have to have four rotations, two balances, and a travel to your mat and away from your mat. How you put that together, I'm leaving that up to you today. Well, what I'm hoping is that we have this, um, this transition from Key Stage 1 to Key Stage 2 to Key Stage 3 so that when, the, when children are coming up into secondary school, they all have had the same kind of background um, vocabulary um, so that it makes it easier for the, te the secondary school teachers then to know where they're pitching their lessons. Um, and then, but also, in the same instance, we need the secondary school teachers to know where they're going in terms of um, pupil attainment and learning. Um, and if we have that kind of standardised across the country hopefully, um, we will have the progression which is, is lacking at the moment. Starting from the same baseline gives pupils from the local primary schools a chance to integrate more quickly when they arrive at the secondary school. And that's not all. I think they will start from the same baseline and that will help the teaching of the secondary teachers as well in that they know when they're coming up that they're all at a specific level and that they can teach straight away when they're coming into year seven, um, knowing that um, the pupils have the basic shapes, the basic subject knowledge, so that they can then run with their schemes of work and their lesson plans straight away through. At King Edward the seventh school in King's Lynn, there's also a range of strategies in place to ease transition. Close ties between the secondary and its local primaries are a key component and leadership is just one tool for achieving this. Can you all come in, please? These year five pupils from Eastgate Primary School in the town act as playground activity leaders. King Edwards, known locally as CARES, invited them to come into the secondary school and trained them there for their new role. The junior leaders is, is part of a larger cooperation that we have with CARES, so our children are used to working with students from CARES who come down and take part in PE lessons and in sport. Our youngsters get a chance to go to King Edward VII prior to them going sort of secondary age, so they're meeting their staff. The PE staff from CARES are very familiar colleagues uh, and visitors to our school, so it, it sort of aids the transition in that there's a certain amount of familiarity that's built on respect. Great, now we're going to go to Chelsea and Lucy, he's going to play Shipper Roy with you. The outcome is not only purposeful physical activity at lunchtime at Eastgate, 
but also a group of youngsters who've already had a very positive experience of physical education in their next school. I think most of our children really look forward to it. As the summer term goes on and we have sort of links with CARES, they go up and have their visits, uh, they're projecting themselves forward in a really positive way. Um, for example, our special needs children, we have special transition meetings where particular members of their department come down to school, meet the children. Where it's necessary and appropriate, those children have special visits where they go to become familiar with the situation and CARES find out where they have to provide particular elements for those children. Um, but because we've got close links and because I think about 80% of our children go to King Edward VII, uh, over time there's lots of older brothers and sisters there uh, and they see it as part of a continuum but certainly by the time they get to July you know they're really ready to go. Red! That's the end of this game. Competent Village College is a sports college in rural Cambridgeshire. Just like the Manor School in King Edwards, it recognises the importance of a smooth transition. Over the last five years, a coordinated programme of initiatives has produced good results. I think before the programme started, it was like it, like it was in many schools at that time and in some still is. Um, there was PE at the big school, which was often single sex, often quite traditional, often quite games orientated led by specialists and there was PE in the primary schools with a lack of really good facilities, a lack of specialism often amongst staff and a lack of confidence. Um, so the two were very, very different. As at King Edwards, communication between secondary and primaries is key to bridging the gap. Combatant achieves this in many ways, including dedicated web pages for primary PE coordinators and regular meetings where staff from Competent and its local primaries share information and ideas. I'm going to call out some of those words on there and maybe some other ones and you need to do the action that goes with those words. We'll try with some music as well. Spinning, you can move around, you don't need to stay in the light, you can move around the room. Today, Competent's dance specialist Zoe McEwen is working at Hazlingfield Primary School. That's what we want. Somebody who's watching it think, oh, there's something gone on over there. For them to, um, you know, find your dance so interesting, they don't know where to look next. Okay? That's what we're looking for. You can all do that. Both Zoe and Ali are advanced skills teachers who do a lot of work in the partnership primary schools. It's another way of ensuring there's good communication between the primaries and the secondary. Zoe's young pupils find it easy to relate to the Harry Potter theme, so the lesson is fun and having a different teacher isn't a concern for them. So he gets this invisibility cloak, doesn't he? And he goes underneath it, Harry Potter goes underneath it, and when he's underneath the cloak, nobody can see him. Zoe, Ali and other colleagues build productive relationships with the primary teachers and, at the same time, enhance continuity of teaching practice. It's a team effort. It's not me teaching and the teacher watching. There is a structure where I will lead the first lesson as a kind of demonstration lesson, but gradually the teacher becomes more and more involved. It's joint planning, and by the last lesson, the teacher should be leading it, and I'll be supporting. Vicky Nightingale, the PE coordinator at Hazlingfield, has already benefited from the partnership. When the PE manager from Combatant came and supported me. She showed me things like, you know, the different muscle groups, how to warm up properly, uh, how to name them, giving the children some ideas for them to feed back to you, how I might organise the children, what the exact technique is to throw a javelin, all of those type of things that, you know, you yourself wouldn't necessarily know as a primary non-specialist. They are the specialist when it comes to their children and their age group, and I'm the specialist when it comes to PE, and it's very much a team working together. It's the training, I think, more than anything else for me. I think it's just so valuable. And of course, the other effect of this arrangement is that primary pupils are getting to know the people who will be teaching them when they move to secondary school. Combatant hosts an annual dance festival that brings primary and secondary pupils together on its site. There's a range of other tournaments and festivals too, including an athletics festival every summer, specifically for pupils in transition. Regular development camps for year sixes allow the gifted and talented to flourish. 
and their peers who lack confidence in physical education also get their own extension camp at Comberton. It's really good on your tip toes now. Hey, these ones are great. If you're in, you're out, you're out. You're, you're really getting your weight forward. It's, it's excellent. Okay, is everyone happy? Yeah. yeah. All this contact is invaluable, but not without practical difficulties. We're in a rural area, and so we run all these things, but getting children to them is increasingly logistically and financially difficult. So as a school, we now have three minibuses, and we um, help pay for primary teachers to qualify to drive the bus so that they can use the bus for a day, they can have it at their school, they can take, bring children to us, they can take their children home again, and we just charge them petrol um, to do that. So. We, we really want the children to have the chance to come and we don't want money to be a barrier. Nice and relaxed. Good. Competent also coordinates the gathering of information about pupils from its local primary schools, giving its PE staff a head start on each individual's abilities. We have more information about all children, um, the, what they're good at, what they need help with. And when they come to Competent, when they come to the secondary school, um, are, we put them into mixed ability groups, but they're not their tutor groups. For PE, they are special mixed ability groups. We have the same number of level five children in each group, the same number of level fours, the same number of level threes. We put the teaching assistants into groups that have children with specific needs. Um, and every teacher who has a year seven PE group will know what those children are good at, where their strengths are, what their talents are, and if they have any difficulties or problems in PE, what they are. So we don't need six weeks to find out anything about the children in Year 7. We already know everything we need to know about them to start teaching them an appropriate PE programme. So much of the groundwork for a smooth transition has been done by the time the primary pupils arrive at Competon. But a further adaptation in Year 7 also helps. Single-sex lessons, like girls' netball, are the exception, not the rule. Children coming into Year 7 have only ever done mixed PE. To them, there's no reason to split into boys and girls. So for almost everything that we teach in Year 7, we teach in, in a mixed gender groups. The recent change to that this year that we've made is that we are separating four invasion games for that one module of work. Uh, and boys go with a male teacher for a rugby unit, and the um, girls go with a female teacher for a netball unit. Manor, King Edwards and Comberton have worked together with their local primary school partners to smooth the transition between primary and secondary physical education. Key elements have been developing personal contact between primary pupils and secondary staff and pupils, using events and resources to help primary pupils become familiar with a secondary environment, ensuring continuity of teaching practices between primaries and secondaries, and enhancing communication and the flow of information between schools. After a lot of thought and hard work on transition, the schools are reaping the rewards. One little boy wrote me a letter a couple of years ago when he'd been to Talented and Gifted Development Camp, he'd been to a football tournament, he'd been to the Athletics Festival, he'd been to his year six intake day and he wrote me a letter saying I feel like I'm at Combatant already and it's still July you know he hadn't even started um, and that is how we want it to be you know that they're really looking forward to it there's nothing to fear they understand it all they know it all and it feels just like a continuation of their primary education.